Okay guys, another title Tuesday where I couldn't play Nakamura, <laughs> but I got to play this strong Grandmaster 2700 here on, on chess.com from St. Louis. And of course, I had to play our Pierce defense. Notice that it started with uh, a Queen's Pawn opening, but then it sort of transposed after Pawn to E4, we get to our Pierce defense. And they're playing this burn variation. Of course, we had a lesson on it. I think it's lesson 96. Very long lesson, so my apologies. <laughs> my apologies in advance. But guys, basically here, I'm just doing exactly what we covered back in that lesson. Just trying to expand on the queen side. It's similar to what we do against the 150 attack. We covered it on lesson 70. And then here, before, the idea, guys, is that I want their knight to leave so that I can do knight d5. Now, they took, which cannot be a good move. And now, after I trade, e takes f6. They have to move their bishop. And we both get doubled pawns isolated on the queen side. But I feel like I am a little bit ahead in development. My rook already on the open file. Now, my bishop, of course, I wanted to develop it. I was considering g4 as well. Probably I should have, <laughs> but anyways, here I I had I did it later, so I had to use two moves with the same bishop, but my opponent also moved their bishop twice, to e2, then to d3. Now here, I'm a little bit concerned about the rook getting to the seventh rank, but after carefully paying attention to it, I realized it was not going to do anything by itself. Two rooks, it could be a different story. This one, I thought it was going to be under control, and of course, there are always tricks since after knight b6, the rook doesn't really have anywhere to go. So knight b6, I'm already paying attention to the d5 square, but more importantly, I'm looking for ways to trap that rook. So guys, if we're the black pieces here, what's the easiest way to trap the rook? Well, I could offer an exchange with rook b8, or I could do bishop c8, but... I need to consider what to do if the rook goes to c7. Well, knight d5, even though it is not trapping the rook, notice that it is not on the 7th rank anymore, but more importantly, it is on a very interesting diagonal that my bishop could get onto. So I got my pawn back, and now I'm ready to take on g2. Notice that, of course, I gotta make sure my knight is not gonna get trapped, but I already realized I could go to e3, but more importantly, Look at that rook on the same diagonal as their knight and the other rook. So, of course, I looked at my candidate moves. Um, bishop a6 check first, bishop b7 directly. I compare, and then I ended up simply playing... Uh, I think I just played bishop b7 because, guys, this is just uh, material right away. So, they decided to give me the exchange instead of the, of the knight. Makes sense. And now, I just need to be careful with that pass pawn it is isolated, so no big deal, but I need to be careful, especially in this quick control, guys. And don't forget, we're playing a Grandmaster, almost 2,800, so they could take a losing position and just make it work, make it work for them. It, it's happened to me many times, so I, I know that I need, to be, I need to be careful. So they took on the 6. Now, here, Bishop G7, pinning the Knight, then I could look into taking on C6. Of course, my opponent um, tried to keep his only counter play, which is that pass pawn. But now I need to take care of it. Guys, the only way I'm going to lose this game is if I make a silly mistake and I blunder a piece, or if I let that pawn become something. Right now, the pawn is nothing, but we have to be, we have to be careful. Now they have to make they have to make a choice. Is that bishop going to stay on d6? Maybe by playing c5? Are they going to move back and allow me to block it? But no matter what they do, this is a very uncomfortable position for them to play. The rook on h1 is not doing anything. So it looks like they have counterplay, but they really don't. And guys, I already knew worst case scenario, I was willing to trade or sacrifice my knight or bishop for that passed pawn. So there you go. Now here, this is, uh, I think my next move here, you're going to see it was marked as a brilliant move by the engine. 
I had no idea it could be brilliant. It just, I think I had no choice. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I did it. But anyhow, I took care of the pass pawn. Now uh, I still have to <laughs> see what to do with the, with the rook. Now I took on d4 first. And now after bishop c5, notice that we have the same amount of pieces, so rooks and two minor pieces. But notice that I have a pass pawn on the f file. And this has to be completely winning now for, for the black pieces. Got to be careful, 30 seconds, but it should be very easy to play. Now, I was thinking of f4, and then if anything, going after the bishop with the discovered check, all of this came to mind, but they had king d5. So I had to be very, very careful. Now, guys, this part, you're going to see probably many mistakes. It's already getting to time pressure for me. So, and I knew, I knew my opponent was going to try to get me uh, because of the time pressure. So to me, I'm thinking, what's the easiest way to uh, convert this into a win? Well, my pass pawn, but at the same time, I need to be careful with their counterplay. The C pawn again, you see, is, is coming forward. I cannot allow that to become something one more time. There we go. Now I'm going after the other weak pawn. And at the same time, I'm controlling their C pawn. You see, they want to advance it. I took pinning the pawn so I cannot let them advance. At this point, I'm thinking, well, worst case scenario, again, I sack my bishop for the pass pawn, and I either win this endgame with so many pawns that I have, or at least I get a draw. All right, I don't want to pin myself. And now my bishop is not only attacking their pawn on h2, but it's controlling c7. And again, worst case scenario, I just sack my bishop with that c pawn. Okay, there you go. And don't forget, guys, pass pawns are meant to be pushed. If you have a pass pawn but you never push it, well, it, it's like you don't have it. And also, I'm paying attention to my, to my opponent's checkmate threats. If that king goes to e6, maybe it gets a little bit weird for me. So check. Now, threatening this cover check with the rook, but also trying to get to e1. And at this point, guys, the game is pretty much over. So they, he kept playing for a little bit more, but of course, this should be pretty easy to finish. And even here, you can see me uh, hesitating, which I shouldn't, I shouldn't be. There you go. Just look for that pass pawn, easiest way to win. I still blundered. I got to defend my pawns. I want to trade pieces, but I don't want to trade... Uh, pawns i need pawns to promote now here i could have done even try to sack uh, my rook for the bishop but i was playing just too fast playing really really bad but guys it's really it's really difficult to mess this up i've done it i could mess it up but luckily it, not this time there you go and then finally my opponent resigned so guys the last part not so good but i wanted to show you the game anyways for you to see how everything that we have covered about the pure defense in our lessons actually uh, gives us good uh, good winning chances against these uh, strong players. So quickly, let me show you here the evaluation. And again, 85% accuracy is not that bad. Um, and yeah, all of this we covered e5 blunder. We already talked about it because now before, when the knight leaves, I go to d5. If they don't, well, I get a very comfortable position already. Slightly better for black. Bishop f5 was a mistake, Made, makes sense. Maybe six. Now here I considered even rook b8. I think I mentioned it, but then I decided to go with it. So bishop c8, uh, knight f4, of course knight g2, and then after bishop b7, the game uh, the game is pretty much over, guys. Yeah, knight e3 was a, a, a move that I knew I had to to have before I took on g2. Now f5 mistake. It looks like getting the knight out was the right way to go. Okay. Blunder, of course. So the engine just wanted me to push the pawn. Okay, so rook c7. Honestly, I did this move because it was the only thing that made sense. But it seems to be a really good move according to the engine. So uh, the point is that now if they take, I was happy to take on a6. And guys, always thinking of the end game. So I'm paying attention to an end game. Even if I give the exchange back, I'm thinking that the end game that I'm going to get is it easy to win or or not? And this, look, 4.87, 5 point something, this is definitely easy to play. But still, blunders, look, f6 is a blunder because of a deflection. They could have taken on f6. My rook could be hanging. I had only a few seconds, so I didn't see it. 
probably without a, probably even with an hour, I wouldn't have seen it. But anyhow, from this moment on, um, yeah, the pawn is gone. Check. And after rookie one, guys, the game is over. So with that said, I will leave it here and I will see you in our next lesson.